Good morning. This is Bev Horner. I'm your testing coordinator at Falls High School and welcome to Aspire ACT training for our 10th grade class this year on November 11th. We're going to follow policies and procedures as presented in your manual. Please have your manual ready to go. We're also going to cover guidelines for administering the test and test administration procedures. First, where to access today's information? Um, you're going to go out to staff, faculty, state assessments folder, and the Aspire folder. I have forms, the bucket checklist, I have today's training, all of that information you can go print and review as you see necessary. Make sure you have my cell phone, 281-841-3335, uh, in case the night before or early morning hours of the day of the test, you are not able to do your proctor assignment, please text me and identify yourself right away so that I can make adjustments to the schedule. At this time, uh, your team leader should have the oaths, and they look something like this. And you're simply going to sign and date the oath, turn that back in to the team leader, and uh, here is a quick look, by the way, of the manual. And you probably have some yellow stickies and flags ready to go. You're going to want to flag some pages. Please sign the tra training sign-in sheet, position on campus, your signature, the date of your training, and mark a check to indicate you just signed your oath. Turn that into your team leader. Why are we testing Aspire? Uh, Aspire is a pre-ACT for our 10th graders. The scores reflect the student knowledge and skills that are linked to ACT college and career readiness benchmarks, provides tools and data for student learning strategies, and this replaces the plan test that we have given over the last couple of years to our 10th graders. Policies and procedures. So now please have your manual ready to go. Flags, highlighters, pencil. Follow along in the manual. Okay, starting with test security on page two, uh, the expectation as it is with our other state assessments that you read and understand the contents before administering the test. We always want you to protect the security of the testing environment. That includes both the room and the bucket of test materials that you will sign out on test day. Do not leave the testing material unattended. Do not leave testers in your room unattended, especially with the testing material. Avoid actions that violate the policies and procedures, such as accessing testing material before the test, making copies of it. Uh, we don't want you to assist students with test questions in any manner. Simply do tell them to do the best that they can. Do not paraphrase test questions. Again, do not assist the students in any way with test questions. Allow students, do not allow students to be unsupervised while testing. Uh, do not uh, fail to report uh, prohibited behavior. You do want to report that or document that. We have some forms we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Um, do not change student answers with or without student permission. And do not allow students to test beyond the timeline that is permitted. Uh, make sure that you're accounting for all testing material. All right, we're going to continue on with guidelines for administering the test. And it's handling of the testing materials, what we will start with. To give you a feel for what the test will look like, there's going to be five time tests. There will be separate test booklets and answer documents for each of the five time tests. However you receive that material in your test bucket, please keep it in the order you received it and also hand out the testing material and set up your room in the same order as received. Uh, test book, booklets have form numbers and serial numbers. Answer documents are specific and identify each tester. So answer documents will be pre bubbled Keep in the order for bucket turn-in as well. The same order coming out, the same order coming back in to the library when we're all finished. We have created name labels so that you can take the student's name in that order throughout the room on the front edge of the desk that will help you when you're handing out testing material throughout the morning. Calculators will be used for math test only. 
we will be, be providing graphing calculators and four function calculators for every student that is testing. Students may not share their calculator with another student. Scratch paper will be placed in the bucket, but scratch paper must be requested by the student. The expectation is that the student will write any notes in their test booklet, but if they request scratch paper, we can provide it. The proctor has a note in the bucket to ask the students to write their name, their school, their subject being tested, and their grade at the top of the scratch paper. That will be turned in and we will need to keep that scratch paper. Scratch paper must be collected between each testing session. More guidelines on page five. Um, if there are any accommodations you need to provide, you will see it on the testing roster. Only provide what is on the testing roster. Again, we said there's five subjects. They will be tested in that order, reading, math, science, English, and writing. There will be breaks provided between subjects to give you time to collect up completed testing material and to hand out the next testing material. Uh, you will be posting start and stop times for each test on the board, and you will be uh, allowed to give one five-minute verbal reminder of five minutes left uh, for each test. Clocks. The expectation is you hopefully will have a clock in your room. Students can look at the clock. You may also feel free to write down, for example, the amount of time that the test will be for. So if it's a 30-minute English test, you could say English test, 30 minutes, then post the start and the stop. If there is no clock in your room, uh, you can use the link for the online timer. I have it here in the training. Again, you have to show a clock, not a countdown of time remaining. Page 6. If you go to your manual to page 25, you will see that you will be documenting in your manual on that page the start time, the five minute remaining time, and the stop time. So once you have them start their test, go to page 25, document those three times right up front. Click your timer to keep accurate time, uh, the handheld timer that will be in your bucket. Um, if uh, you wish, and if there's a clock on the wall, you may choose to go online and use the online countdown timer, but for your eyes only. Let's review the testing timeline. You're going to see the testing timeline here. It's, in, it's been given to you so that you can get a real good idea of how uh, the testing day will go. Uh, it is also the last page of your duty schedule, and start and stop times are given as a guideline. Now, I've also put in a little cushion for those start and stop times, so don't use my start and stop times for your documentation on page 25. Just use it as a guideline, because I've also put in like the three or four minutes into that start and stop, so to, in, in addition to the actual testing time to give you an idea how the day will flow. Um, breaks are built into the schedule, as you can see, and we want you to do your best to adhere to the schedule. And notice that there is a restroom break number one, hallways 2100 and 2300. That's when you have the opportunity to release anyone that needs to go to the restroom. The same with break number four. It's the same hallway, 2100 and 2300. Break number three is for hallway 2200 only. We only have so many restrooms, two at either end. We don't want students to be in a long line and not have an opportunity to uh, go to the restroom when uh, they've been giving that opportunity. So we're trying to cut down on the restroom traffic by breaking out hallways for the various restroom breaks. Notice there's for break number two, there's a stretch break. There's a class change going on due to the regular bell schedule. We would prefer that you send no students to the restroom. So I want you to play that by ear and see how that goes, but we would prefer that you try not to send any students during the stretch break. All breaks, they can go to the front of the room, eat or drink, no food or drink at the testing area. Um, I recommend you ask students to take a break after you have picked up the materials and ask them to be back to their seats in five or six minutes. 
I'm giving you those extra minutes, the 12 minutes or the 14 minutes, what's ever in the recommended timeline. That's to give you time to pick up completed material and distribute the next material. Inside there, you're going to give the students five or six minutes to get to the restroom and come back. Students may all finish before the stop time I have here. If they stop before the scheduled stop time, that's great. Stop testing, record the all finished time next to the scheduled stop time on page 25. Move on with a break and your subsequent testing. At this point, you may be ahead of schedule and that definitely will work to your advantage when it's time to turn your bucket in. All our testers who exited during the test to complete the remaining time uh, during the break. Um, we are going to talk more about this extra time in just a moment. Uh, meanwhile, collect completed testing material individually from students. Announce and write on the board when the students must return to their seats for the next test. Again, allow your students to go to the restroom if it's your hallway's turn. And then allow your students to eat the snack at the front of the room. Again, we want you simply to do the best you can to stay on timeline. If you get concerned about it, please call for assistance and I'll come to your room. Bathroom breaks. The clock keeps ticking. You're familiar with that with EOC. No time is given back. Strongly urge the students to wait until their scheduled break to go to the bathroom. We know this is not going to be perfect. There will be students that will need to go to the restroom on an emergency basis. Just make sure you send one student at a time. Remind them no time is given back. As we continue with page six, they talk about no electronic devices. And we ask that no test administrator pull out your electronic device as well. If you need help, go outside, have a hallway monitor, get word that you need help. Uh, we're going to ask that the procedure you're familiar with, as far as the baggies and the yellow stickies, follow that. Students will be putting their cell phones and labeling, labeling them and putting them in the baggies and turning them into you before they test. The expectation is absolutely no electronic devices of any kind, including watch out for cell phone watches, should be on their person. None should be on their person. It must be turned in before testing begins. Make sure they're very clear. Read subject directions verbatim. And we're going to be talking about the page numbers, but you can mark this now in your manual. That page 11 and 12 will be your general test directions that you will read at the beginning of each subject test. Flag it now in your manual. You'll be looking at that each time. Okay, now I would like you to review the irregularity form. I call it the IRR form for short. And the student time tracker. Uh, first, what I'd like you to tell you is there are going to be unusual situations, uh, such as a student becomes ill, go, has to be escorted to the nurse. They might be out for a little while. Uh, there might be other, another unusual situation that requires the student to be out of the testing room. Remember, they need to be escorted. And you need to track that time. Again, this is not a bathroom break. This is a situation where we need to stop the clock for them only and restart it if they return, and you need a way to track that. You're looking at the time tracker form. I have that out on that staff drive for you. Um, you will be able to use this form. It's got lots of rows for you. All the proctors that come, in, come into your room to relieve you can use the same form. You're tracking the student name. If they took the reading test, the time out. If they came back 30 minutes later, you put the time in. You put the number of minutes the student was out of the room. And then you're going to, if you are still testing that same subject when they return, then you can give them the time back. If you've moved on to the next subject, you've moved on. And they will not have time to go back and uh, put the additional time in. So because of that, uh, we look at that as uh, an irregularity for not, not as you view it as state testing. It's just an irregular occurrence that a 
ACT wants us to track. So then the second thing that you will do is you'll go to the IRR form. And again, for those unusual situations like someone went to the nurse, there are also some other specific irregularities. I've blown that up on the left side of your screen. You will see this form on the staff drive. Each individual testing administrator will complete the student name. You will have collected up the testing material so that you'll be able to write the barcode of the book and the form number of the book there. You'll see it there. You'll also write down the time when the irregularity occurred, at least at a minimum, what time they left the room. If they never return, then you will not have a return time. And then you will check the type of irregularity in those boxes that are there. Uh, do not check void unless you've called me to the room. We'll talk about that prohibited behavior. I'll make the call on the void. But if the student departs, returns, check not void, hopefully they will return and have time to finish their test. At the bottom, you'll see group irregularities. Group irregularities would be an example, let's say the fire alarm went off. Then you have an irregularity on the timing of a test that affects the entire uh, room of, of testers. And so you would document that in the bottom section. Don't forget to sign the bottom of the form. And then after the fact, when you turn in your bucket, I will initial it. And I actually have to enter that in online. Um, again, you're going to allow this time to be given back to that student if you happen to be in a situation where the student came back, time for the test was called for the whole room, you needed to give them some time back. Go ahead and start your timer. Give them some of, give them their time back, but do not stop the procession of your timeline. In other words, give them as much time as you can without impeding on the start time of the new test. Don't let that stop you. If you have to have them turn in their material and they still didn't finish, that's what we'll have to do and then you'll proceed on with the next scheduled time. Okay, uh, I've, I've talked to you about recording on the IRR form. Uh, here are, uh, so if students engage in prohibited behavior, we're gonna take a look at that list in just a moment. For example, if they engage in prohibited behavior or if the student fails to follow instructions, for example, Students mark their re responses randomly or they refuse to mark responses. This will have an impact on their score and an analysis of the results. That's why they want us to have documentation on the IRR form that this happened. If your test is mistimed, you made a mistake for the whole group, call me in, ask for my assistance. I'll discuss it with you, see if we can give them time back. It'll just be a case-by-case -case basis. Basis. That's why it's very important for you to track the time when you start a test and stop a test for a group. Sometimes a student might challenge a test question. You're going to want to document that on the irregularity form. Maybe a student has a defective test booklet or answer document. You'll probably call me into the room so we can take a look at what to do. Or I talked about that general disturbance that would affect the whole group. You would fill in the bottom part of the IIR form. Here is some of that prohibited student behavior that I referred to earlier. Number one, you're going to contact me immediately because I'm going to be the one that's going to make the call to avoid the test. It could be cheating, disruption, using notes or unauthorized aid, using a calculator when they were not supposed to, something other than the math test. They shared a calculator and should not have. They used an electronic device because they failed to comply and give it up. They filled in circles or or answered questions after time has been called, even if the test booklet is closed. That is prohibited behavior. So you would be documenting that as well on the IRR form. Let's continue on. Test administration procedures. Okay, we're on page 10 at this point in your manual, and we're going to be covering the verbal instructions. Right now you might want to get some yellow stickies or some flags. And you're going to uh, want to know that for every subject you test, there are, for all tests, general set, uh, a general instructions section. 
That's page 11 and 12. Verified testers have done three things. Gridded the test form for each test, ensured that they've entered the test date, and printed their names on the test booklet for that subject. Here are your list of page numbers that you may wish to flag now. General directions you read for every test, 11 through 12. Then you would skip to the uh, page number. If you're starting for reading, it's 18, math. Skip to science or skip to page 15 for English or page 24 for writing after you've read the general directions. You read the instructions for that test. Then you flip to and flag at this time, I would recommend, pages 25 and answer document instructions are listed on page 25 for all tests and then page 26 finishes up the directions for all tests. All tests. Bell schedule, proctor schedule. Um, you've already seen your duty schedule and duty assignment. I'm using the 41, 42, 45, 52, and 53 notations. I have provided a table and bell schedule in the staff drive. You can make a copy of it, refer to it so you know exactly on the regular bell schedule what time you need to report. First period proctors are responsible for checking out the testing materials as early as 6.50. Uh, and would like you to have been checked out by 7 o'clock. You're going to have lots of documents, answer documents and uh, test booklets to count. And then you're going to be reaching out to the relief proctors in your room. Hi. Uh, give me just a moment. I'm sorry, I had an interruption there, so I had to briefly pause. But to pick up where I left off, um, you're going to be checking out that material a little early because you have quite a bit to count, but you need help. You need help carrying the calculator case, so that's why I want you as the main first period test administrator, you're responsible for reaching out to your relief. Some of you have more than one relief because based on your schedule. Um, but make sure you get at least at least one person to help you. They can come with you or you can work something out where they're signing out your calculator case and taking it to the room. And if they want to get there and help you as soon as you walk into that testing room, I highly recommend. I want them there right at the beginning to help you. You need it to assist with the room setup from 7 to 7.20. Here is what you will see when you print this off of the staff drive under my state assessments folder. Please print it. It shows 41, 45, etc. so you know what the times are for your duty. You can see that uh, like for period 45, one, if you're on B lunch, it starts at 11.09. If you're on C lunch, it starts at 11.15. I am aware of that. Just get to the testing room as soon as you can. All right. Okay, this is the good part where it kind of sums everything up and everything is put together um, in the checklist. Um, I might go ahead and continue, I'm sure I will, continue to tweak the checklist, but I'll always put the latest and greatest copy out there on the staff drive. Maybe a few days before Aspire testing on November 11th, you're going back out to the staff drive, printing the checklist, the PowerPoint, looking through the checklist to make sure you know what to do in what order. So starting with this checklist that you will find in a yellow folder in your bucket that day, um, first period proctors will sign out and count material. Your relief will assist you. You're going to post the do not disturb. You're going to place the restroom sign. You're going to post the pink roster so the students can locate their seat assignment. You're going to tape the name labels on the front corner that will help you in distribution of materials throughout the day. Distribute the number two pencils. Distribute the baggies and the stickies. Only for math, distribute your calculators. I want my first period proctors to announce to students these important items. 
Do not write on their answer document. Make sure they're checking their name on the answer document, that they have an answer not document that belongs to them. That's very important. No electronic devices on their person and turned in. Personal belongings at the front of the room. Um, and then you will let them know. Today you will take a five subject test. Each test is timed. Uh, review your work and sit quietly if you finish a test. All answers must be transferred to the answer document prior to the end of the test. Let them know there are stretch and or restroom breaks provided between tests and that they should use the restroom during their assigned uh, breaks according to the timeline. Please make sure you take attendance. We'll have a blue and green copy that lists all the students. You're going to write absent on both copies. The blue one will be posted by 815. Turn over the green roster. First period proctors and second period proctors. Make sure, second period proctors, that if the first period proctor has not had time to do the seating chart on the back, please go ahead and do that. Double check that it has been done. You're placing seat numbers on the back. You do not have to write their names. Starting the test. I've tried to pull this all together. You're going to distribute test booklets and answer documents individually to each student. Do not pass them down the row. You're going to pass them out again in the order that they were received in your bucket. You're going to read the say directions verbatim for page 11 and 12, and then you're going to go on to the appropriate subject, subjects page, read the say directions, and then once you do that, it says to continue to page 25, read those directions, then post your start and stop times on the board. Track your time carefully. It get, here you'll see it goes through reading, math, science, English, and writing. During the administration of the test, you're going to actively monitor by walking quietly around, stationing yourself throughout the room, standing, looking, watching. The other activity that you can engage in besides actively monitoring is organizing your testing materials from a previous test. Again, putting them back in the same order that you set, set the room out for. Uh, you're going to check from the previous test when you're putting them back in order. Did they write the form number? Did they write that date? Did they write their name on the front of the test booklet? You're going to check for those three items. For emergency restroom breaks, again, you're going to release one student at a time. I am making a change to this checklist. I had it hot off the press this morning, so it is currently not reflected, but please be aware that you will not be documenting time when they go to the restroom. You will not. When they go to the restroom, they come back, don't document the time. The clock has kept ticking. However, you do have the IRR form and the time tracker form if they have to go out due to being ill and they're going to the nurse or some other uh, situation that we talked about earlier. Whenever a student does leave the room, though, for no matter what reason, please pick up their testing material, wait till they return before you give it back. And again, uh, with last five minutes remaining of a test, announce that there is five minutes remaining according to the time you've documented on page 25. When testing is complete for each subject, you're going to go then to page 26 and read the say directions verbatim. If it's the math test, you're going to pick up the calculators. Uh, reset the timer. If a student, again, this is going to change, they will not need to track time for the restroom break. So please ignore that. That will be updated. Uh, it will only be for those students that have particular situations that you might need to track time back if they come back during that test. You're going to pick up all other answer documents in the same order as placed throughout the room. Include the absent students. Do the same with test booklets. Allow stretch and restroom breaks according to the timeline and post and announce to the students, hey, you have five or six minutes. Here's, here's the time you need to be back and post that. Let's say you finished testing your five subjects. You're about ready to dismiss. Please return cell phones right before dismissal. They may go get their personal belongings right before dismissal. Remember, you're going to be too busy giving five different tests to worry about giving personal belongings back early. Don't even worry about that. 
Just give their personal belongings and cell phones back right before you release them. Uh, ensure that all items are returned back into the little ba bucket supply baggie, baggie, and then make sure you take down your pink roster, your do not disturb, and your restroom signs and place them back into the bucket. Then you'll return the bucket back to the library. We're almost done. Um, I've got a list of what the testing bucket will contain. We've talked about everything in here uh, that will be contained in the bucket, so refer to that later. Thank you for attending the training. Uh, remember, I will always be available. Just let the hall monitor know, and I will come to you as soon as I can on test day. On November 11th, we will have all paper testers. By fall, we have over 900 students testing. And then the next day, I will be doing a small, two small groups testing. We'll have the makeup uh, testing on paper for those that were absent. And then for students that are newly enrolled, I will be testing them online in a lab, so we'll be doing that as well on the 12th. Just an FYI, if you see that you have some students that have to report to a testing room on the next day, Wednesday, November 12th. Thank you so much for listening to the training today. I hope you liked the training. You can go back and revisit this training again or go back to the staff drive because I have all of the main uh, testing PowerPoint slides there and all other forms that you would need to refer to. Thank you and have a great day.